You are gonna love this no bake peanut butter pie because I'm using all natural crunchy peanut butter and just some good old cream cheese, some whipped cream. What's not to love? Take a look at the ingredients. It's all linked down below. I got some other no bake pies as well if that's your thing because for me, baking is a bit of a chore and I know you should be baking your desserts before your dinner. Who has time for that? So let's do this no bake pie. So I'm starting with the crust first and the crust is gonna have the best of both worlds. So we have both graham crackers and some Oreos. So just like any other crust, you wanna grab a couple, you can put it in a bag, in a mortar and pestle, just like punch it up, uh, but just crumble it until it's crumbly. And uh, do the same with the Oreos as well. And no judging if you're snacking at the same time. Next, we're also gonna need some butter, which I've already softened. It just speeds up how long it needs the microwave by maybe like two seconds. So kind of useless, but get that butter, microwave it up, and then add it to a bowl that you have your Oreo and graham crackers crumble in, and then just mix it up. You wanna make sure you kind of knead it almost really well, not only will that help you to identify any large chunks that you don't want in there, but when you clump it together, if it's all mixed well, it will stick like a, like a block of crust almost. When you get a texture like that, you are perfect to now go to the next stage. So just slide that over, push in your pie dish, and then add all those buttery crust bits into the pie dish and then just pat it all out until they kind of are sticking together um, and they are basically really firmly packed against each other so that when we go ahead and freeze it in the next step, well, it has the contact that it needs to make sure that it doesn't come apart when we are slicing and serving later on. So that crust has been chilling for about an hour in the freezer so we can start working on the actual filling. Now, there are lots of pages out there that keep preventing you from trying to use natural peanut butter. They say that the oil separation may ruin the texture and make it hard for you to have a fluffy filling. No, I did it. I prefer using natural peanut butter. It just tastes a bit better, I feel. I just like the flavor of those roasted peanuts and it just comes out a bit more. And it's just an excuse. All you gotta do is take a spoon, maybe the back of the spoon, like the actual like pointy end, right? And just mix it all up. Use your forearms, use some of your arms and you know, mix it well. And they also say to use the the the, the bar or the, uh, the, the block of cream cheese and not the tub because it softens easier, the texture is better. Honestly, I may be completely wrong here, but I found nothing wrong with the tub of cream cheese. I found no issues with whipping it up because I'm using my KitchenAid. And if you have that, perfect. But if you are doing the same recipe and you're doing it all manually, let me know what you find. By the way, my peanut butter is crunchy because I like the crunch. You can use that if you want. It adds texture. It's not just all soft on soft on soft, right? And you wanna whip that until the cream cheese and peanut butter has kinda of mixed together. But now, you want to kinda of thin that out and really get that fluffy finish. Because it needs to be pourable, it needs to be thick enough so that it's not only soft, but you can easily spread it over your crust and it has that, that soft, um, pleasing texture that a pie should have. To achieve that, we are gonna pour in some heavy cream. As I'm mixing, I'm adding in the cream, I'm visually checking, I'm tasting, and when it looks kind of like this, that you can stop mixing. And let's take a look at what to do with this next. Now, the crust is gonna be sweet. We're gonna put some chocolate on top, some whipped cream on top. There's a lot of sweet happening at almost every layer. So now it's your call if you want the filling to be that sweet as well. Maybe you want no sweetness in there. Maybe you just want to taste the cheesy peanut butteriness, or maybe you want it to be really sweet. 
basically I went right down the middle. I didn't want it to be too sweet. I didn't want it to take away from the sweetness of the other ingredients. And I honestly just like the peanut butter and cream cheese kind of flavor with that subtle hint of sweetness for which I added some powdered sugar. Now just mix that up and once you're happy with how that tastes, be sure of it because next you're gonna pour this on to your pie dish and just pat it all out, spread it all out and then just like kinda give the actual dish a couple of gentle bangs over the countertops to get any air pockets out. It will just help for the filling to like set properly and then pop it in the freezer for about two to three hours. So for me, the actual pie was about 15 minutes out from being completely chill. Um, basically, you wanna let that sit and set. And this is a good time to now start your chocolate sauce. You can of course make it ahead of time. I just like was doing other stuff. So for the chocolate sauce, there are different ways to doing it. The way that I'm doing it is with cream and chocolate chips. You can use vanilla as well if you want. Now, we're basically making what you usually would do for a chocolate fondue. So if you want fondue, do the same stuff and maybe increase the amounts or like double or triple the recipe based on how much fondue you'll be having. This should be good for maybe like 10 minutes of fondue. <laughs> now the trick is to only bring that cream up to a steam. Don't let that boil because if it's too hot and then you add the chocolate, it may split and it may break the sauce. So once it's steaming, you add the chocolate chips in. I'm using semi-sweet and then just start mixing on ultra low heat and just keep mixing until you get a texture that's smooth like this. I added vanilla, but you don't have to, but it does help improve and enhance the chocolate flavor. If you wanted to put a bit of espresso in there as well, it just helps the chocolate shine a bit more. Now that texture is perfect, which I can now pour into a squeeze bottle. Just make sure that you let that sauce cool down and not completely cover it. That little hole there will allow the excess steam to come out. And then the whipped cream is its own other beast and I have a couple of recipes for whipped cream, but this is a unique way of making it that I recently started doing. So this here is one of those bottles that Starbucks uses. It's by a company called Issy. If you're interested, it's linked down below, but you don't have to buy it but you can use any you know, cool whip or handmade whipped cream or even the bottle ones. But the issue with the bottle ones is that it like melts way too fast because I guess whatever chemicals or propellants are in there. So this is the best thing to have a stable kind of uh, whipped cream that just stays perfect for longer. So what I have here is uh, basically a jug. You add cream, about a half a liter, and then you um, you seal it up, you put a cartridge of nitrous oxide, which comes in these cool bottles, which looks like NOS from the Fast and Furious movies, honestly. And then you uh, close it up and then you shake it. And that's when the fun begins. And the best part about it is you can just like have it prepared, ready in the fridge. You don't have to use all that cream at once. You can just have it in the fridge and the gas, as long as the gas is in there and it's kind of engaged, then uh, you can just have perfect whipped cream at any point until that cartridge runs out. And this is where everything just comes down into a crescendo. So the pie is done, our chocolate sauce is done, our whipped cream is prepared. So unwrap it and uh, then just make sure that you do a good job because when you mess up now, you can't go back. And I was pretty nervous about finishing it so that it looks perfect because I've never made this pie before. Well, I have made other no big pies and I've had practice with those. So what I did first is take my chocolate sauce and just go in a crisscross kind of manner and go everywhere. And then taking some uh, peanuts, which I've crushed Pretty, pretty well, I think. And uh, just sprinkle that all around because I really want to taste the peanuts. So peanut allergy warning right here. Then finally, grab that loaded canister of whipped cream and just go ham on it. Now there's a different ways where you can make all sorts of design, but I'm not that well 
equipped with those skills yet. So right now you're gonna get a nice circle, which I touch up a couple of times, and then sprinkle the top with some more of those sprinkled um, or crushed peanuts. You can put Reese's Pieces, mm -hmm. chopped up. You can put mm -hmm. Oreos if you want. Um, really, it's the, the spice, your oyster. And um, cutting it is very easy, that butter crust, uh, the butter graham cracker or your crust really makes it easy to just slice one way, slice the other way, release the edges, and then just scoop it out with like one of those cake um, spatulas and you have a perfect slice of pie, which is sweet, crusty, crispy at the bottom, at the crust, smooth, fluffy, and just so peanut buttery, basically, on the middle. And this is that chocolate sauce, the cream, the lightness, the creaminess, the richness, the crunchiness. It's just kind of, kind of perfect. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love the other pies as well. Check out my other recipes for no-bake pies, like my six-ingredient no-bake Nutella pie. If you love this and you wanna see more of that whipped cream canister, let me know down below, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye all.